Uh, Tuesday. Yeah. Second day of the week. Yes, I'm sir. Four. I'm just, I don't know how tomorrow's not referred to. Second and six. Three's day, which would make sense. That's funny. Yeah, four's day, then five's day. Six day, that could get a little weird. With you in charge, everything would make sense. It would make sense. No daylight savings time. Like, nobody pays taxes. Golly, let's make this happen. Yeah, think about starting it. Just in my neighborhood first and seeing how it catches on. You won't be the first. Yeah. Next headline, Jake Crane assassinated. Yeah, Jake Crane dead, first five minutes. By the lemonade stand. Uh, You got a fun fact this morning? Oh, don't talk to me about lemonade stands. The kids yeah, didn't saw, even fill my got cup up over yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, I have a fun fact. Um, here it is. If Kenny Pickett played in 1944 and had the exact same stats that he did last season in 2023, he would have ranked dead last among NFL starters in touchdown passes, and they only played 10 games back then. Um, that's that's crazy. Oh, and oh. also, let's not forget, we were invading the, the shores of Normandy yeah. uh, in 1944. So... Not only were you we bad in 1940, back in the day, that's like everybody else, the best quarterbacks were out there, you know, trying to stop the Nazis. But I still believe. Sit behind Russell Wilson for a Give year. Time, let, you know, let it marinate. Figure it all out. Let's let all watch Russell Wilson come in and do the exact same thing. I hey, he's still got it. Well, let's yeah. all watch Russell Wilson come in and be a little. <laughs> Where is it? Well, got but, it. They're only paying him like $35. Yeah. And, this and thing, Russell Wilson, actually. I'm sure he'll calm George Pickens down a lot. Oh, Feelers. yeah. For Let's sure. wield. For Let's sure. wield. Oh, my goodness. That's so much to slogan. get to. So much to get to. Kirk Cousins signs a four-year mega deal with the Atlanta Falcons. Saquon Barkley is now a Philadelphia Eagle. And Ron Slay from the SEC Network joins us to talk some March Madness because we're there, baby. I'm Jay Crane, and we're turning up on a Tuesday here at Crane & Company. If Kirk Cousins was as good at playing football as he is at making money in football, he would be the greatest player to have ever played anything. And after inking another huge deal, this time with the Atlanta Falcons, for $180 million, tag on a $90 million guarantee, he has now become the second highest earner in NFL history. Let's say that again. Kirk Cousins is now the second highest earner in NFL history. He's amassed $331.7 million in the NFL, which sits right behind Aaron Rodgers' $342.5 million. Now, do you know how many collared shirts at TJ Maxx you can buy with that type of money? A ridiculous amount. He's basically D.B. Cooper, but he walks around in broad daylight with a smile on his face and waving at people. Now, all of this money, and he only has one playoff win, And that was in a crazy ending against his now division foe, New Orleans Saints. Now, there is no doubt that he is, without a doubt, the best negotiator ever. Now, look, Kirk's a good player. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I like the guy. I'm rooting for him. And he handles his business in the right way. But my goodness, has anybody ever been this overpaid for anything ever? I mean, having said all that, he does make the Falcons better mainly because he can complete multiple passes during a game without looking like an idiot, and he does know how to handle the locker room. He's going to be a great mentor for some of the young talent the Falcons has, like Bijan Robinson, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and others. But a four-year deal with a guy that is 36 years old and coming off an Achilles injury is borderline GM malpractice. He could have been a great mercenary signing to help train an eventual replacement, but they're all in on Kirk Cousins. I just hope they know. The dinner now starts at four, and he's got to watch Murder, She Wrote after in a mansion that's built on gold bars and Falcons fans' dreams slash tears. So congrats, Atlanta, I think, and kudos to the best businessman in the NFL, Kirk the Coin Cousins. That's right. It's the nickname I'm giving him. Former Michigan quarterback David Cohn, my brother, former Western State Colorado wide receiver Blaine Crane. Don't get me wrong. I already know what this guy's going to say. He's going to call Kirk mid. He's going to say he's not very good. I think Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. Yes. He he should not be the second highest paid player in the history of the NFL. (laughs) It's just wild to me. 
Uh, Kirk Cousins' agent needs to write a book, and every other agent needs to read it. And it's going to be called How Is I Fleece Jimmy the Sexton? Falcons. He's been doing this. Remember when he got the $96 million guaranteed? First round, they're like, wow, fully guaranteed money? Like, no NFL player gets that. He's been doing this. Congrat- and congratulations to him. Yeah. But I do think that, uh, I think that he fleeced the Falcons, you know? And as, as a native of the state of Georgia, I have to say, I understand why the Falcons fans are bittersweet today. Because you immediately got better at the quarterback position. Congrats. But that wasn't hard to do that. But also, you've put a ceiling, I think, on the position. Yeah. Even in a way that Kirk Cousins is going to come in and win more football games this next season than Justin Fields would have. But with Justin Fields, you would have had this sort of unknown possibility, of, you know, an endless ceiling about what he's able to do, maybe make some more electrifying plays. And he's a lot younger. So I understand how the Falcons fans are feeling today. It's just it's crazy to me that we saw Deshaun Watson kind of being mentioned, possibly going to Atlanta a couple seasons ago. Then Lamar Jackson a season ago, would they meet the $240 million demand? Or at least it was over $200 million at that point. All that just to really get Matt Ryan back, I feel yeah. like, at $180 million. So congrats to Kirk. Look, at least you can say this. You're playing in a weaker division. He could come in and be the most experienced and possibly the best quarterback in that division. And if you win that division in year one for a new head coach, that's a good start, and if you make the playoffs, anything can happen. That's kind of the most optimistic I can be. Yeah, and uh, Blaine, I'm gonna let you go ahead and get get the hater aid out of the way. I'm gonna let you get the hater. It's okay, embrace it, <laughs> embrace no the darkness. Raid. But when you look at this division, I mean, Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins, then Bryce Young. After what the Panthers gave up yesterday, I know you know they're trying to get better on the offensive line, and I get it. But goodness gracious, uh, just your overall thoughts, Kirk Cousins, 36. You just tore your Achilles. You're not you're great. not a young man anymore, but you're younger than Kirk. Not a great situation. Well, look, I mean, you got to remember, Kirk's a gold chain wearing, gold mouthpiece in uh, type of guy. You go into Atlanta, um, so if there's ever a spot to do it, it <laughs> would be there. Um, but I think this is a good deal for the Falcons. Did you pay him a little bit too much? Yeah, but Kirk Cousins has been doing that his whole career. I'm um, just look around him and what they have. I mean, you have Bijan Robinson. You have a nice piece in Kyle Pitts. You have another young piece in Drake London. You'll figure out the wide receiver too. I mean, I don't think they need Kirk to come in and be the greatest player of all time. I really don't think they need that. I think they need Kirk to come in and just do your job. Do what you're paid. Be who you've been your whole well, career. Can he do that after Be who you've been your whole that's career, and I think the Falcons can build a roster around him that's good enough to maybe actually win a couple playoff games. I truly believe that. Well, if he's going to do what they paid him for, he better come in and not only win football games. He better protect the city at night. He better lower gas prices. <laughs> yeah, he better invent an engine that runs just on water. I mean, again, $90 million guaranteed? This isn't young Kirk anymore. I, I David... I'm kind of in the, the realm of what you're saying. You did get better. The mm-hmm. Falcons are a lot better. Yeah. Right? After getting Kirk Cousins. But you're not winning a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. You're, you're not. Like if that and and I worry more about not just the hey, it's a four-year deal. We may not win a Super Bowl in four years, but now those young players don't get to grow with a quarterback that could eventually take them. Yeah. To a Super That's Bowl. the thing. I don't. That's think, what would worry. I don't me. think you were going to win the Super Bowl this next year if you put Patrick Mahomes on the team, right? But yeah. you're talking about year two, three, and four of this contract. Um, so that that's just what I find interesting. But to to Blaine's point, uh, you know, a, a, a younger roster with the Falcons right now with some talented pieces. Maybe what you just need at the quarterback's uh, position is just some stability and some experience and to lead the locker room. And maybe this doesn't even make it to year three or four. I don't know. For the Vikings, though, I mean, the Vikings now are going to sign Sam Darnold to a one-year deal. God, so they're going to bring Justin him Jefferson, in. How you know, offensive-minded coach. I, I think the the Vikings made the right move by not going in on another $180 million deal with Kirk Cousins. The question is now, do they draft quarterback? How early in this draft do they get one? And is Sam uh, Darnold the fully guaranteed day one starter, or is that just an insurance piece in case you, maybe you find yourself in the position Seattle did a decade ago where you draft Russell Wilson, but you brought in Matt Flynn, and if Russell Wilson overperforms, he ends up being the day one starter. Yeah, I I feel like this is kind of a a stopgap um, with with Sam Darnold's, uh, you heard Justin Fields could go to like nine different teams yesterday. You heard, oh, Minnesota could get interesting. Oh, the Raiders, oh, it could get interesting. Last thing on Kirk Cousins, you know what this feels like to me for the Falcons? It's like that lady, uh, like the woman who, when she was 20, married the musician, you know, that, that his band ended up getting big and he went out on tour and it was just a mess for like six, six seven years and they get divorced. You know what? 
she goes and hires you know, like a CPA, like somebody safe. Mm. She just feels like a safe, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to fly all over the country. I just, you know, want to be home by 6.30. Let's cook some asparagus, have a good time. You know, let's be safe, right? Let's, let's be in a good school zone. That's just what it feels like to me. But there's a ton going on in free agency that we got to get to. We want to know what you think. Who won free agency yesterday? After Ron Slay comes on, uh, the phone lines are going to open 7.15 a.m. Central. We want to hear from you. But speaking about hearing from people, yesterday somebody called. I think it was Ethan from Seattle. And he gave a shout-out to FitBod. Yeah. He said he has never yeah. repped this amount of weight. He's never felt better. He's never looked better. It's an emotional situation in a happy way. What is FitBod? Well, I'm going to explain it to you without even having to look at the paper. It's a personalized workout that fits whatever you have, your gym set up, whether it's at home, whether you go to the gym. And we all know that sometimes you plateau in results because of basic boredom, right? Or maybe you're not working different muscles enough to be able to continue the pace that, that you're trying to go and get to the point that you want to get to. Uh, your goals, abilities, gym setup, like I said, while it helps you track and visualize your progress along the way and it learns from previous workouts, but this computer is not trying to take over the world, just trying to make you look better. It'll also switch up your exercises to avoid overtraining and keep you from burning out, keep it fresh and fun, and it couldn't be easier. It's like having your own personal trainer, but it's cheaper, it's better, and it's way less annoying. So add FitBod to your workout essentials today Join FitBod to get your own personalized workout plan, and you get 25% off your subscription, or you can try the app free. All right, here's where you go. FitBod.me slash booster. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot me slash booster, B-O-O-S-T-E-R, for that great deal. Get jacked and tan about being jacked and super tan. All right, we're going to put a link for merch in the chat. David's jacked. Mm. Not as much tan, but... You know, Super jacked and Keep staring in the body. sun the way you are, and it's going to work out, I yeah. promise you. Uh, go grab some merch. My candle's gone. Oh, it's right there. I need the candle. Can you hand me the candle? Can you, can you hand me the candle? You want the flaming dragon candle? Yes. So do you want a daily wire shop? Yeah. Okay, I actually like what you did there. I actually like what you did. I need my fix. Anyways, all right, let's get to the chat. All right, chat, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you donate, it's on topic. I will read it. If it's not on topic, I will catch it at the end end of the show. Get the questions. I can't wait to read them. Let's go to Alan. Somebody put a question in there. Why are we having to ask for questions? Alan Adams, he says, you're all going to eat crow when Captain Kirk takes the Dirty Birds to the NFC South and... The NFC Championship game. Okay. Captain take Kirk, it to the NFC take South. Take us all the way. Nobody's sitting there. here saying they're not going to win the NFC South. All right. That's like being the skinniest kid at fat camp. They're not making Even though that's NFC not a Champions given either. Game. That's not a given either. To Tampa Bay, man. Look, but Baker and the boys in Tampa Bay. Derek Carr, I don't believe in. But Tampa Baker, not hey, now he's comfortable. Maybe we'll start doing commercials again. It's an emotional time. I mean, whenever it's down to a two-team race instead of four, that's an easier conversation. Even though, I mean, the Saints were right there at the end of last year. Mm-hmm. The Saints were, had a chance to win that in the last week of the season. So, I don't know. It's uh, I get it's gonna it. It's going to be fun. Well, we'll it'll be that fun. That, be that's fun. a good way to put it. Let's go to George Reuter. George, what's up? Hashtag Ask Cranny Company. That's us. How will my Jets do with Tyrod Taylor at QB? Because you all know Aaron Rodgers will probably disappoint us again. Uh, I, I like that move as, as a backup. I like Tyrod. I hope Aaron's able to. I hope the Jets draft Brock Bowers and Aaron Rodgers is able to play. I want to see that combination. Uh, but, you know, in general, you got to have a backup. Uh, obviously, we know that, um, you know, not just for college football after what happened to Florida State. But, no, it's a good move by the Jets. I uh, just, Aaron's got to stay healthy. That's their, that's their only shot. Tyrod Taylor's not leading the Jets to the Super Bowl. I'm sorry. Just the truth. I was going to war chance. The Falcons are going to make it to the Super Bowl. Let's all be honest. And then lose after leading 28-3 to at halftime. Nope. This has nope. Matt Ryan written all over it. Kyle Shanahan's in San Francisco. Not happening. <laughs> Not happening. All right, let's go to Eugene. Eugene, what's up? He says, I like the Kirk Cousins move, but give me your honest opinions on how the commanders have done so far. They're such a dysfunctional organization. I know they're trying to make some changes. They're trying to trim the fat. You know, at, uh, and you got Austin Eckler yesterday, which yeah. is a nice career, Austin. Appreciate you playing. No, in, in all seriousness, I, I just, there's some organizations that it just feels like are always battling uphill. And Washington is one of those. And a lot of it is self-inflicted. But when you look at some of the moves they made, bringing Austin Eckler, I know he's in the twilight of his career, still a good player. Uh, yeah. The question now is at quarterback, right? Is, is Sam Howell, are you doubling down on Sam Howell being the guy? Uh, and if he is, 
then give him the pieces around him, give him the defense around him uh, to be able to go out there and win. If not, then make your play in the draft. You look at the picks they have uh, and, and see what you can get for him. So I'm going to wait and reserve judgment until I see exactly what happens at the quarterback position. But I thought they made a couple good moves yesterday. They got uh, Oboy from the Cowboys, um, Doris uh, Armstrong, which is, which is a nice add as well. But I just feel like they're always battling uphill. I think you know exactly what I'm talking about, Eugene. Let's go to Jack Nas 5524. He says this is definitely a put up or shut up move by Arthur Blank. Let's hope Kirk Cousins can actually come in and get the job done. I like I would love for Kirk Cousins to go into Atlanta and it just mm-hmm. go gangbusters. I just the ceiling term you used was the best term. I feel like there's there's just a breaking point that they're not gonna be able to get past it to win a Super Bowl, right? I think that's the, the standard for Falcons fans. They've been there. They almost sit from the cup, and they got it taken away from them. I'm not expecting him to come in to be Michael Vick, but, you know, he's, again, coming off that injury, there's only so many things that Kirk can do. We love the pieces that he has around him. I just don't think that team has enough. And then you add Kirk Cousins, I don't believe is the type player that can elevate them to a point where, I mean, look what he had in Minnesota. Exactly. Like, like, let's not act like he was just Oliver Twist out here asking for change yeah. walking down the street. I mean, Hell, I mean, even last year. Uh, it, the question now becomes, if you're Minnesota, what do you have to do to appease Justin Jefferson? Because I can promise you Justin Jefferson walking in that huddle and seeing Sam Darnold isn't exactly going to fire his ass Or up. a rookie. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Kirk Cousins had better offensive weapons in Minnesota, a better offensive coach. I mean, to say that, you know, all the things that you're saying about a ceiling are true, even if Kirk Cousins was just coming in the way that he played the last couple seasons. Yeah. Coming off the Achilles injury, I don't know if people are talking about that enough. Like, how, how much is that going to affect him as he's trying to rebuild here with a new and team? And you'll hear all about it with Aaron Rodgers. That's all you are hear about is, oh, how can he bounce back from his Achilles? Oh, the Achilles is going to ruin him. We, we've already heard it. Yet you're really not hearing that with Kirk Cousins. And the funny part is, the only person to, to make almost as much money as Aaron Rodgers is Kirk Cousins. Wow. You know who else wow. is on that list in the top 10 earners in NFL history? Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill and wow. Kirk Cousins should run for president. We would or just be hostage negotiators. And so if Kirk Cousins was a hostage, a hostage negotiator, about 30 minutes into it, the kidnapper would be paying <laughs> the city money to let the hostages go. That's how good he is. All right, one more. we got to move. All right, let's go to Chris. He says, Falcon chose to not pay Lamar $200 million, but then turn around and pay $180 million to a guy that's 35 and coming off an Achilles mm-hmm. injury. Someone make it make sense. I get it. It's frustrating. Well, the deals, I I think, I don't think Lamar was ever leaving Baltimore. I don't think he was ever leaving Baltimore. I think the Ravens would have matched. Um, I I think they would have gone back and forth and he would have ultimately stayed in Baltimore. But that doesn't excuse the amount of money, in my opinion, they just pay Kirk Cousins. Those are two different things. I just don't think Lamar was ever going to leave Baltimore. But... Let's get to the rest of the... Three. All right, let's keep it rolling. I mean, everything's changing by the minute as we speak with this NFL free agency. I've tried to break it down by position, so let's start with running backs. Ton of moves yesterday. Saquon Barkley uh, decided not to stay with the Giants. He's going to be a Philadelphia Eagle on a three-year deal worth $37 million. Um, you know, NFC East rival there. Just imagine the run-pass option scheme with Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley. Then you got A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith on the outside. Skill position wise, you know, they, the Eagles are in a great spot offensively. Now, I thought Blaine put out a great tweet yesterday that said <laughs> the Eagles secondary just got way better si- after signing Saquon Barkley. It's the truth. You know, the, I, I don't think the Eagles had to go all in at running back. But what I find funny now is these, all these running backs are getting paid. I thought y'all thought y- y'all were complaining about not getting paid. Like no running backs ever got paid anymore. That they're devaluing the position. I don't know. Every time I looked yesterday, there was a running back getting paid. Tony Pollard, Saquon Barkley, Singletary, Swift. I got on the list. But, I mean, I'm looking around. If Jalen Hurts, like I know the offensive line, Jason Kelsey retired. They're getting older. Lane's getting older. Is the, How many better skill position groups are there offensively than what the Eagles have? If Jalen Hurts can continue to be Jalen Hurts, and there's not some huge drop-off, which I don't see why there would be. Honestly, I know Jason Kelsey, like I said, is is retired, and and he's a huge piece, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, I mean, Devontae Smith, as you mentioned. I mean, you look at the tight end position. I mean, you got monsters running around. And uh, A.J. uh, Brown on the outside. I mean, is there a better group? of skill position players on offense and what the Eagles have. So, Blaine, 
uh, Saquon Barkley is one of the best running backs I've ever seen. I mean, even going back to his days at Penn State, mm-hmm. bounced back this past year from an injury. Uh, DeAndre Swift, who you had at running back, though, is going to go join the Bears now. And like Jake said, Jason Kelsey, your center, one of the best to ever do it, is retiring. We don't know what's going to happen at left tackle. Does this move automatically just make the Eagles' offensive run game better, or would you have rather them invested in the offensive line? Um, I would rather you invest in the offensive line 100% when it comes to NFL running backs paying this much. We usually don't see this from the Eagles and how and what they do. The last time they paid this type of money was 2012, and that was LaShawn McCoy when Shady was just cooking everybody in the league. Yeah. And I get that a little bit different times now. You're not getting any younger up front. Your secondary is the reason you lost. And look, is Saquon Barkley an upgrade from DeAndre Swift? 100%. Uh, he's more versatile in what he does. He can catch. He can run. He can do it all. But I don't think this is going to get you over the top and w- going to win another Super Bowl. I think what held you back what was the defense, was the secondary. So this is a great piece to add. There's not just guys walking around like Saquon Barkley out there. I get that. But right now, our main fix wasn't at running back. We have to fix what's going up on the defensive side of the ball and what's up front when you just lost Jason Kelsey, the best center to ever play, in my opinion, and you have Lane Johnson, who I don't know if he's going to play another year of football. Mm-hmm. So is it is it a wrong choice? No. Would it be my first choice? No. Did you guys see what former Giants running back Tiki Barber said? Uh-huh. He, he was basically saying, Saquon, you're dead to me now. You're dead to us. I think it was mostly tongue-in-cheek. I, I didn't hear the actual audio clip, but Saquon Barkley didn't take it that way. He went on social media and said, if you're mad at me for taking the money from a team that believes in me, then, you know, I, I can't. I don't have well, anything to well, say about well, that. You and also said, don't smile on my face when you see me. Tiki. Yeah, you could have you you stopped after taking the money. Like, I... <laughs> I just, I laugh because we do this with, with sports figures because there's an attachment that grows when you're a fan, even at the professional level, right? That's one of the things we worry about colleges is that attachment, you know, now that guys are getting paid and it feels like college sports is more corporate, you know, are we going to lose that attachment? This whole hometown discount thing, right? The, hey, you know, we were there, we drafted you and we believed in you, so you should take a pay cut. And let's see these other guys. We need to stop calling it hometown discount. We, we need to start calling it what it is. I'm willing to give up money to win. For better okay? players. For, for better players. That's what it is. No hometown discount. But acting like that, that is one of the rites of passage to make you like a, a loyal person to where you're playing. How about this? How about after the quarterback says hike, he turns around and gives the ball to Saquon Barkley, who's being chased by monsters. <laughs> By monsters. Every play in the NFL is like being in a, mi- a medium to minor car wreck. You want loyalty? Go run into Fletcher Cox three times in a game and then get busted up like Mr. Potato Head. And, we- and you're built like Saquon. You're still getting busted up. I-, I just, anybody that makes fun of somebody or says, oh, you're a bad person for taking the money, I'd like to see what you would do. What would you do for $37 million? Because I know what I would do. I would I would drop into to to Tokyo and try and take it over if they asked me to for thirty seven million dollars. I mean, it's just I, I laugh sometimes that people are so disingenuous sometimes. Mm. Well, I mean, if you are the Eagles, this is kind of a double edged sword to me because Saquon's been hurt a lot mm-hmm. in his career. Oh, it's a it's a gamble gonna, for and, sure. And you're going to pay this money to him. I do think he'll have a lot more success at the Eagles than he did at the Giants just because of the weapons you have, just because the way they play. I thought the Giants, if anything, was holding Saquon Barkley back. And I believe he's since he's been in the league, he's had the ninth most total yards. So he's been playing. Like, he is Saquon Barkley. We know who he is. But if he gets hurt, man, it's just wasted money. He's got hurt every year he's played. Yeah, it's. I, I, I do want to add this caveat. The one thing that I could understand about Giants fans being super pissed, is that it is your rival. NFC, right, right. Yeah. like, it's, I can understand that part of it. But the money part of it, I leave that alone. Like, you go from Auburn, Alabama, or Alabama to Auburn, I get it. Hate, 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 hate. hate I understand hate. it. But uh, the money part, let's just stop with this whole, 
You shouldn't take the money. You should just love us more. Yeah, right. Wait till you get divorced. All right, let's rapid fire through these right here. I want all your thoughts. So the Packers are going to sign Josh Jacobs from the Raiders, and they're going to release Aaron Jones. This one surprised me a little Mm -hmm. bit. I mean, even if you make the case that Josh Jacobs is a better version, I mean, both these guys are incredible running backs, right? But Josh Jacobs is younger and a better version of Aaron Jones right now. Do you guys still think this is the best move for the Packers to address? Well, if you couldn't get a deal done, you, you didn't want this hanging over you know, the team and affecting, you know, the locker room and the culture around the organization. It feels funny because Aaron Jones and the Packers just go together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like sweet mayo on a BLT. But adding Josh Jacobs is a pretty good ad. Josh Jacobs is pretty daggum good running back. I, I tell you, man, I just, I like the spot that the Packers are in right now. Um, you know, you look at the cap space. I've got to see it after yesterday. Uh, my half my family's huge Packer fans. They're really excited about the direction it's going. Uh, you, you know, you look at the safety position as well. I think they made a couple moves there after struggling last year to be able to get guys on the ground when they got into the second level. You feel like this Packers team is is being built completely right. They're they're, they're they understand where their weaknesses are. You've got the quarterback piece figured out. You're trying to eliminate distractions, bolster the roster, eliminate distractions. Keep letting these young guys grow together. I just I like what I'm saying. You got a young coach in, in Coach LaFleur. I, I just like the direction of the Packers right now, even though they weren't able to get a jo- uh, deal done with Aaron Jones. Having Josh Jacobs is a pretty damn good consolation. Well, they're hoping that he returns to form like he led the league in rushing two seasons ago. Will that happen again? Um, I think he will have, obviously, a better season he did at the Raiders. The Raiders kind of did a disaster up front on the offensive line. But, you know, I don't think the Packers set out to go get a big running back deal. Um, oh, this was a reaction. I think things broke down, broke down between Aaron Jones. They wanted Aaron Jones to take a pay cut, I think a $5 million pay cut. And Aaron Jones said, no, you can screw off. I'll take my ball and go home. And the Packers said, well, you can enjoy that. We're going to go sign Josh Jacobs. Yeah. So if it's anything, it's not a loss for the Packers. It is a win. Um, Josh Jacobs has to stay healthy with Aaron Jones struggled with throughout the year. You got to remember how the Packers run the football. They are a downhill power running football team. You do that. Him and A.J. Dillon, if A.J. Dillon is still on the roster, I'm not 100% on that. That is back-to-back people running through you for four quarters. So good for the Packers. You're a young football team. And adding Josh Jacobs, the way your secondary plays and how young they are, the Packers are slowly becoming a problem. Yeah. But this is what they do. This is what Green Bay does. Jordan Love turns into the guy who he looks like he's turning into. The Packers could turned into something people do not want to deal with. Got to avoid the sophomore slump, so we'll keep uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Here's the rest of the running back moves. Austin Eckler, your former teammate, is going to uh, the Washington Redskins now. The Chargers are going to sign Gus Edwards. I really wanted to see Austin Eckler in Jim Harbaugh's offense, but they're going to sign Gus Edwards um, from Baltimore. Titans signed Tony Pollard three years, $24 million. Almost assures us that Derrick Henry's not going to re-sign there. I don't know what the Titans are thinking. Uh, Patriots signed Antonio Gibson from Washington. And then the Bengals release Joe Mixon, who's been there for, what, the past seven seasons, I believe, and sign Zach Moss from the Colts. Uh, you know, a lot of people are like, what the hell are the Bengals doing? I, I, can under- I can understand that. Joe Mixon's a hell of a player. A- after the video I saw of, of what happened with him in college, I've never rooted for that guy since. I, I wouldn't. I can't believe he's – I can't believe he played a snap in the NFL, mm. to be honest with you. If you watch that video, it's absolutely visceral of him just knocking that girl out at that diner. Yeah. I, well, I, even if you take just what they did, I'm talking about Zach Moss and Joe Mixon. I mean, Zach Moss is a good player. On the field. He's a really good player, and I mean, like, like the yards per carry, I think, was almost identical yeah. last year. But you're gonna save, you're gonna save more in the money not spent on Joe Mixon to cover Zach Moss's first year salary. So, I mean, out of all this list, I think the Bengals are sort of making the best move possible if Zach Moss can stay to form what he's been doing. For sure, and I like Zach Moss the way he's able to catch the ball out of the backfield, mm-hmm. uh, too, as well. Not, I mean, Joe Mixon was obviously pretty daggum good at doing it, too, but I don't think the drop-off is so significant that it's some humongous blow to the Bengals. I'd be more worried about T. Higgins. So what about, what about uh, Austin Eckler here? I mean, going to Washington on a two-year deal— you were in a. You had to think it was a better situation if you could get two years from the Chargers with Jim Harbaugh coming in. You know, a franchise quarterback. How do you feel about that? I mean, you played with Austin Eckler. Uh, first of all, Austin's a great running back and also a great person, but this is for sure a step down. Um, you're about to walk into a Commanders team that's about to draft a new quarterback, a rookie quarterback. So Austin Eckler will no longer be the student. He will become the teacher. And for a running back, that's not fun to do to come here and 
teach your quarterback after he's got done playing with, I mean, Justin Herbert well, right now is the second highest paid quarterback in the league. This feels like he got pushed out to me. Hmm. That's that's the first thing I thought. I if I don't think Austin Eckler didn't want to play for the Chargers. I it, this feels like hey, new new staff. You know we may, he, he is getting older, right? You, you look at you know he's kind of complaining about the amount of carries that he got a couple of years ago. That he need to lighten his load a little bit. This feels like that that he was pushed out a little bit. That's well, just he did have his worst year. Yeah, it just year. That my instinct. Something I don't think you choose to go to the Commanders. Yeah, like to be honest with you. Um, all right, the the Titans signing Tony, Tony Pollard, Tajay Spears. What, Three what's, years, twenty four. Why? Months. Why? I get it? Why? I mean, he's a great player, but. Well, it's got nothing to do with that. I it's know. I think Ty J. Spears is a, a pretty good running back as well. Exactly. I don't feel like I feel like that money could not that you don't go get a running back, but why did you have to go spend that type of money? Mm-hmm. You, you got a lot of problems. Titans got a lot of problems they need to fix. Uh and and just saying, hey, look, I know Derrick Henry's not here anymore, but please don't hate us. Here's Tony Pollard. That's not gonna do it. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna work for me. Yeah. All right. I, go just, ahead. I still understand what the Titans are looking at, realistically. Derrick Henry's gone. I think Derrick Henry's gonna be a Raven. A Raven? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Derek and Lamar. I think Derrick Henry is going to be a Raven, in my mm. opinion. But I think Spears, you got to give Spears a chance, man. He's I think nice. this kid's a real deal three down back. He's nice. I thought he ran better than Derrick last year. If you go back and watch some of those times. Well, he does man, everything. I mean, he's he, he can catch it. He can run it. Will Levis, I mean, is still coming up a little bit. So, I mean, if you're the Titans, there's a lot of problems to fix. But, hey, let's go get a running back. All right, wide receivers here quickly. Bengals, T. Higgins wants a trade. Yes, to get I, out of I say, I'd be more worried about that than Joe Mixon. Wow, that's wild. And then Gabe Davis signs with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, does that mean that Calvin Ridley's not coming back? Christian Kirk's not coming back? What's, the, what's that mean for the Jaguars? Well, you know, the T. Higgins deal, they franchise tagged him. So I, I believe that had a lot to do with it. I, I want to wait. I'm going to kind of hold serve on, on seeing what's going on with, with Ridley and, and then Christian Kirk. I mean, look at, at Gabe Davis. You know, a lot of people gave him a lot of hell last year from the Bills with, with the way it ended. But, I mean, Gabe can do some things, especially vertically. Um, you know, I like his physicality as a wide receiver as well. It's, uh, there's a plan. The Jaguars obviously have a plan. They brought in Mac Jones to, to be the backup behind Trevor, at least push him. We talked about that yesterday. I'm going to kind of hold serve because, I mean, Calvin really at some points last year was absolutely balling. Balling. You remember the first game of the year? He just went nuts. Like, it's not like Calvin forgot after having to sit out a year after the betting scandal. Christian Kirk... Um, that's made a lot of money in the league as well. I'm, I, I want to kind of hold serve here because I, I want to see you know what happens here in the next couple of weeks uh, with the Jaguars because it's an interesting situation for sure. Then the defensive side of the ball, I mean, the Giants, they rebounded pretty quickly after losing Saquon Barkley. They signed defensive end Brian Burns to a $150 million deal, $87 million guaranteed, makes him the second highest uh, paid defensive end in NFL history. And the Panthers for that get, uh, this wasn't a free agent, I think this was a straight uh, trade. So Panthers get a 2024 second, a 2025 fifth, and then they're going to swap fifth round picks in 2024. I looked at a list of the players and the picks that the Panthers have traded away to end up where they're at right now. And it's literally sickening. It's, it, it will make you sick when, when you look at it. I don't know if there's been a worse organiz- There's a couple in the running. I don't know if there's been a worse organization than the Panthers over the past five to seven years. It, Not even it will, Washington? It's a... It's a that's an interesting sack race. <laughs> like it just, it's bad. When you look at what they have gotten rid of and, and what they, if I'm Derek Brown, get me out of here. Get, get me out of here, dog. Oh God, if I'm a player on the Panthers. Please, get me, get out, me of out of here. If there's ever should be a place where every person should be fired or that organization, it's the Panthers. Because at some point, it looks like you are purposely trying to drown this franchise. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering that's what, what happened. That's what, it, that's what it's looking at. You know it's bad. When Luke Combs, has to come on Twitter and bash the Panthers. Like, man, the Panthers. That's when you know it's bad. You are you just let you didn't get a first round for this guy. Yeah. What? Did for you see what the Giants paid him? This guy who I, I believe was like tied or like led the league in sacks. Who's young? Who's only getting better? What are y'all doing? It's, it's malpractice. I think it was two seasons ago. He had twelve and a half. Then he went down to eight sacks. But the Panthers were 
trailing in every game this season, and he was getting. It, they ran a three-four scheme where he was an outside backer. There was a whole thing. He was like, "Look, I, I need to be paid among the highest." I just, fans. I just yeah. wonder if the Panthers owner got like attacked by a Panther when he was younger and like survived, but like made a promise to like, "I will tank." The Carolina Panthers organization. So it's like a because like, and if like I saw like, if you planned on like <laughs> trading this, why wouldn't you trade him last year? Mm. Well, when it, he led the league in sacks. Well, well, you could get two first rounds or a first round pick for this guy, but you wait and then you trade him for zero first round picks. The, the, if you were trying, like Blaine said, I think even if you were trying to take an organization, you couldn't do it as good as what they've done. It. Mm. Like really, it's when you look at it, we. I'll find it. I saw it yesterday, the list. It will make you viscerally sick. Like, when you just... If you're a Panthers fan, I don't know how y'all do it. I don't know how y'all do it. Like, you know, at uh, least Brandon Miller's good. Last one here. Raiders signed defensive tackle. Uh, Christian Wilkins, uh, four years, $110 million from Miami. They signed Garner Minshew, too, right? No. Uh, no. They, uh, yeah, they signed Garner Minshew. Um, I'll tell you, the Raiders, man. I'm starting to like this. Antonio Let me see Raiders. if that was a one-year deal. I, I, I'm just, I'm liking the Raiders vibe a little bit. Look, Christian Wilkins is a dog. Yeah, listen, don't, like, don't, like, don't sleep on. He this. might be a funny ha ha guy yeah. if you go watch. But as he knocks your head five. off like a grizzly bear, top five Dude, inside nasty interior defensive line. You turn 100%. on the tape, the real ones know. And if you turn the tape, with Christian I don't, Wilkins, if you're the Dolphins, I don't get this. Mm. I mean, there's, if there's a guy I'm trying to to bring back, especially on the defensive side of the ball. It's Christian Wilkins, their best yeah. player. It's not even close. You already lost a linebacker, which you were depleted at linebacker the entire year, barring injuries, and I get that, but you let this man go? Yeah. Well, How are you going to replace this? We just talked about the same thing with the Chiefs and Chris Jones. Yeah. yeah. How important it is to have an interior guy who can push the line of scrimmage from the inside. Hell, you could put Wilkins on the outside if you really wanted to. You need guys like this. These are staples of your team on defense, and you let a guy like this walk. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so the, the Raiders keep beefing up up front. And also, we're going to talk about beef. There's only one perfect beef out there. There's only one perfect chicken out there. There's only one perfect bacon out there. And it's Good Ranchers. We all know it. All right? We're not playing games anymore. Good Ranchers, you know, whether it's American sourced meat as opposed to getting it, you know, shipped in from other countries, which you don't trust, Good Ranchers does it the best. They're offering you a free 10-pound Easter ham with any subscription as well. Uh, and regardless, look, it's not just ham. Uh, it's Again, I, I talked about it, pork, chicken. I mean, heck, they even have seafood during certain times of the year. And did you know, David, you probably didn't know this, that mRNA vaccines are approved for use in pigs in the U.S.? Right? We're not wow. the only ones getting tricked into getting vaccinated. Ooh. Not to mention, 85% of the beef sold in your local grocery store is imported. In fact, over 5 billion pounds of meat was imported last year. The mystery continues to grow. That's why every day I'm more thankful for Good Ranchers. What I love about it is our commitment to transparency. All right, they believe you have the right to know exactly what's in your food, and they're not afraid to show you. And they're amazing supporters of our show. They love Crane & Company yes. as well, and we support them. So go to GoodRanchers.com. Use our code booster, B-O-O-S-T-E-R, to get your free Easter ham today. And every subscription will come with a free Heritage ham that's $25 off and a Good Ranchers lifetime quality commitment. GoodRanchers.com. Use that code booster, B-O-O-S-T-E-R, Good Ranchers American Meat Delivered. You got to cook some up, watch some of these uh, college basketball games. I know it's been cold in the morning, but it's getting warmer in the afternoon. Fire that grill up a little bit. <sighs> Can't wait. Eat meat. No. Eat meat. It's Love good it. Uh, so good. Gardner Minshew's deal is two years with the Raiders. Not yeah. one, two years, $25 million. And as our director, Trey, just told me, Panthers didn't even get a first-round pick when they traded McCaffrey. No. That's what I'm telling you. Look, this That's is... Yeah, like it's malpractice. It's somebody, something's... Something happened in the... This is like a Batman origin Is there a story. betting... Is there a bet out there that... Uh, like, if you... Will the Panthers dissolve as a franchise? And the guy saw it. And put a lot of money on yes, and he's doing it on purpose. It goes back to the guy who stormed the field on the Super Bowl. Yeah, sometimes I mean, look, genius is coming on. Fifty k down, one three hundred seventy k. They come in and on ratted himself out. Told everyone about it. What, what an idiot! Eat your mouth shut, what an man. Idiot. God. I'm hanging out with that guy. It's, I, I want that one. Why am I hanging out with that guy who has the beak from Bitcoin? Yeah. <laughs> All right, chat. Let's go to first. I'm going to go to Nick Bates. Um, not a question, but thanks for helping me finish my morning shifts at the nursing home I work at. My residents have learned. To love listening to y'all. That's dope, Nick. Yes. Hey, hey, uh, tell Kirk Cousins we said what's up. Yeah. 
<laughs> Let's go to Django Nova with a ten dollar donation. Appreciate it. The Texans have eight picks in the draft this mm-hmm. year. What positions do you think they need to focus on? Are there any free agents you think would be a good pickup for them as well? God, the Texans are in such a good spot right such now. Such a good spot. It's such it's the opposite of the Panthers. It's like whoever the it's like the Texans GM was like, all right, what did the Panthers do? Let's do the exact opposite of that, and it worked. It's so true. Well, it's and and look, there are, there are holes obviously in the roster for the Texans, but I mean, you look at the connection between CJ and Nico, and just t- take away obviously you know Will Anderson, some of the ancillary pieces that they have. I just like the vibe from the Texans right now. The most important thing, I think, is keeping that underdog chip on the shoulder culture. You don't want any drama, right? What's that, what was Dalton Schultz talking about yesterday on the show? The difference between the Cowboys and the Texans. And I know some of it, it just comes with the territory. But with the Texans, there's not drama. There's not people walking around pointing you in the weight room like it's a zoo. There's not all these other things you're having to do outside of showing up, knowing what you're supposed to do, working your tail off, and get ready to go play for the greater good of the team. Now, when you look positionally, I think there's some places up front where the Texans can can get better. Mm-hmm. Uh, you always want to, I, I mean, but I don't want to screw up what you've got going with Tank Dell, right, with 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 some of these guys around CJ. But you do feel like, outside of Nico, you need that other big, rangy wide receiver to give CJ that other option, that jump ball option down the field. Because then you have a little bit of everything. But I will always, and I know D'Amico Ryans knows this, because he's unbelievably smart and he played linebacker, and nobody loves linemen more than linebackers. I can promise you that. Um, I'm very interested to see what they build around him, but a lot of it to me is about culture for the Texans, bringing in the right type of person to add on to what they've already. Well, we heard Dalton Schultz talk about that. They brought him in tied in from the Cowboys. I mean, think about hitting a home run on C.J. Stroud, and he's on his rookie deal, getting one of the best pass rushers in the last couple years, um, uh, and having him on his rookie deal. Nico Collins comes on out of nowhere. Uh, I mean, Damian Pierce had one of the best years a couple seasons ago. He's great. So if you invest up front, if you're the Texans, there's no reason you can't replicate what you did last year. Definitely. I agree. Right now, uh, I'll be quickly. Um, Texans, you can always improve your defense. Yeah. You can always do that. Um, um, you re-signed Noah Brown, which is a great piece. He had a couple games where he went off last year. I thought Saquon Barkley would have been an entry look at if you're the Texans to sign to get a really drama. I don't want that. that drama. I don't think a lot of drama comes with Saquon. I don't think oh, Saquon no. manifests as drama. No, no, no. It just it just comes with. But it. I do think it was running back, receiver, and defense. Okay. All right. Well, our next guest. Some people have said he's was the Dalton Connect of his time, or <laughs> that Dalton Connect was the Ron Slay of his time. Uh, our good buddy. From the Boom Boom Room, from the SEC Network, they're going to be covering wall-to-wall college basketball, including the SEC tournament that starts up here in Nash Vegas, baby, on Wednesday. Our good friend, getting up early with us this morning, Ron Slay. Ron, what's up, brother? What's up, fellas? I ain't even have no hot chocolate, man. I just jumped straight in the saddle, baby, ready to roll. <laughs> yeah. Look, Dude, some, yeah, sometimes <laughs> yeah. you got to hop out of the bed like you're possessed. Uh, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think that was a share song. Uh, anyway, Ron, uh, it's one of my favorite times of year where there's not a pigskin being thrown around. Uh, we got co- the smaller conference tournaments. I'm over there watching the Patriot League, like just just like a like a fat kid in a candy store. We got Davidson playing at 10:30 today. We got the Big 12 tournament starting today. Just in in your mind, how excited are you, or as we call it, how jacked and tan are you right now about the the time of year? Man, I love this, man. There's no better time for me um, outside of when it's about to cross over the conference play um, with um, NFL playoffs. Uh, I, I think that's another time that you get a little bit yeah. excited because it's so much to watch. But this right here, you're, you're, um, this, you're, you're highlighting basketball at its finest. Everybody's playing their A game, and you throw Lady Luck in there because you know at some point, regardless how good the team is, it's going to be a lucky shot to go in, a lucky yep. bounce, a five. I'll not get called. Somebody step out of bounds. Whatever it may be, this is it. March Madness, this is the perfect name. This is exactly what it is, Madness. And and I want to get to, obviously, what Tennessee, you know, your alma mater was able to do this year. You know, I lost that last game at home against Kentucky. It's kind of a weird spot a little bit in Kentucky right now. Is, I mean, as, as hot as, as Icarus flying towards the sun. <laughs> but when, when we still have a lot of some, some mid-majors that we got to see who punches what ticket. But can you give me one mid-major out there that you know is going to be in the tournament you think could cause some problems. Mine is watching Drake the other day. Mm-hmm. I feel like they got a lot of pieces. You know, Coach's son's their best player. They got a tree. 
They got a couple dudes with headbands that can hit shots with their eyes closed. <laughs> it's just that that's a team to me. It's a little bit interesting. Is there one you're looking at out there that that kind of would worry you if your team ran into them early in the tournament? Man, I'm, I'm not gonna say that it would worry me if my team ran into them. But um, well, you are a Tennessee think, fan. Y'all pretty good. So yeah, y'all should be all right. <laughs> you know, this year, this year. You, know, yeah. <laughs> uh, you look at it. Drake. Drake is a hot team, man. I, I, I like what. I like what Moorhead brings. Um, mm. I, I think they're they're a team, a sneaky good team. Um, looking at that OVC, then you look at also um, um, Sanford. Well, yeah. well, Bucky well, Ball, I, baby. Yeah, Bucky Ball. I mean, it's it's almost taking the South by storm. So mm-hmm. I would love to see them go in there and get an upset win to build on it even more, man. But I, I think it's a lot of mid majors out there, man, that that could really get you because of that transfer portal, man. And that mm-hmm. extra year, this is the last year we're dealing with that extra year guy, that COVID year guy. So it's going to be interesting to see, man, who who springboards into um, that St. Peter's role or yeah. um, I don't want to say FAU but because they're still rolling. But it's, it's going to be fun, man. Definitely. What little Catholic school is going to do it this year? Dude? I know. One of them. <laughs> one of them that you've never heard about before, yeah. but you'll never forget after this year. Ron, I want to ask you about Kansas. Kansas was my pick to win the national championship before the season. I saw Hunter Dickinson play a lot of basketball when he was at yeah. Michigan, transferred over. Uh, they lost 76-46 this past weekend to Houston. Murdered. I think it was the first time ever they hadn't scored more than 50 points against a conference opponent. Now, Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCullough Jr. won't play in the Big 12 tournament. I mean, we're talking about Hunter's a, a, a 18 and 10 guy. Uh, Kevin no. McCullough is an 18 and 6 guy. What is this going to mean for Kansas moving forward? You know, at a time when you need to be playing your best basketball. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, man. You're essentially t- talking about moving two All Americans off of the board. <laughs> you, when you talk about impact, there is none better. Um, especially in the Big 12 with what Kansas brings. You're talking about veteran leadership, guys that have taken that leap as far as McCullers being a – could be a top-10 pick. Hunter Dickinson walking into it being a, a a guy, man, that can stretch the floor, get you buckets down low. I've never seen a guy tippy-toe rebounds um, like, quite like this at yeah. 16 instead of jumping. But um, it, So it puts more – it puts more pressure, I think, on a guy like DeJuan Harris, man. And, and will he – offensively be able to try to put out more than what he's always already doing. Um, knowing that he's a defensive guy, run the team type guy, you start to put guys in other situations and how long will they be out? Will it just be the big 12? Mm-hmm. That's the question for me, man. These guys get back in there in the NCAA tournament. I've had my shoulder popped out. That really made mm-hmm. me exit from playing, um, from playing professional ball. Oh, really, man, that, that shoulder popped out. And then I got home in the summer and popped out again. That's the most excruciating pain that I've ever had in my entire life. I've torn ACL, meniscus, shin splints, back surgery, everything. Man, that shoulder, it's nothing you can do. And it takes nothing but a little tweak. So Mm. he could be back healthy and playing and it pop one more time. And he's shut down. Not so be the same. it's going to be interesting to see how Bill Self navigates this. Yeah, one more for you here. North Carolina and Duke. I mean, you know it's March when we're talking about these two teams. Uh, North Carolina, first yeah. outright regular season ACC championship since 2017. They won the championship that year. I was at that game. Um, you know, for North Carolina and Duke, how do you see them moving forward here as we start ACC play and into the tournament? Well, uh, I'm trying to figure out, man. It, uh, are we putting any tripping files in for Filipowski? Dude, we're just gonna let this. We're gonna let this thing. This roll. always <laughs> happens, Ron. At Duke, do they practice this? Like, it, I'm just wondering if they practice it. <laughs> hey, man, I don't know, man. Uh, maybe the shoes. You know, I know that they're sponsored by Nike, but Filipowski said he, he keeps slipping. So no, no, man. Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen. It was Ron. It was his knee from when that person ran in. Yeah, yeah. 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 The involuntary response. Grayson yeah. Allen slipped a lot. <laughs> hey, man. I don't know how these people are not noticing. It's a seven foot guy trying to get up, move, jump on yeah. his leg, do something. <laughs> Man, but I think North Carolina, man, they, they're rolling, dude. Yeah, Thank they God, are. R.J. Davis, like they got all the pieces um, in order to make that run. I'm still, I'm still kind of questionable about Duke. You know, what I mean, I, I do see them, you know, trying to make a Sweet 16 run, but we'll see how it shakes out in the ACC tournament for them if they can get back to form. But they, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a hell of a tournament as well. Mm-hmm. But my my money would go with um, North Carolina and Hubert Davis. It's funny, funny the difference uh, a year or two makes, huh? I know. Yeah, people people in Carolina asking for his job, and he's not yeah. going to be the one to get it done. And all of a sudden, he got his pieces in that fits his mm-hmm. the, the way he wants to play, and they're they rolling. 
I mean, it shocked all of us. You lose to Kansas in that national championship, which we were at. Then you bring back Baycott and Caleb Love, and they dropped yeah. from number one to out of the top 25. We were all. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I think this is going to be a problem with Arizona. And I'm not trying to pick on anybody because he is, he is a good player. Man, I, mm-hmm. I just don't believe in K- – I know he's Pac-12 player or whatever. I just don't believe in Caleb Love I, as, as a team, like to win a team sport. I feel like I feel like Caleb Love has been better this year about his shot yeah. selection. But, man, I mean, it just seems like if he doesn't get a shot every two or three trips down, he's just going to go down and shoot one. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just yeah. – and and again, I like the. I'm not saying he's a bad teammate or anything, but just the way he plays, it just looks like it looks selfish to me. That's just yeah, I, this yeah. what I see. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say it's selfish. I think it's it's he's not. He's lacking engagement. If yeah. you will. If if not giving the ball to put it in a nicer <laughs> way, but I, I think this dude, man, he he has all the talent in the world. But why can't you use that same athleticism that? Same determination that you use on the offensive end on the defensive end to get steals. You're too athletic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 weird, man. I think he could take them to the next level, but I'm I'm with you on that. Caleb Love, he did play great. Um, not not just good in the Pac-12, he played great for them in moments as well. Does that carry over to the postseason? Though that's my question. Yeah, it's I I'm right there with you. I I do want to ask one before we get to the chat here, and and I know a lot of people have a question for Ron. I I want to ask you a question because you've been in it, right? You've you and you've watched the SEC grow. Do you feel like, and because again, just instinctually when I see it, when I watch a Kansas go 10 and 8 in conference or whatever it was, and they're still the 11th ranked team, I watch Duke lose, I watch Arizona lose, I watch these other teams lose, and they don't move. But it's amazing when an SEC team loses on the road to a really good SEC team. Auburn goes to Tennessee, loses, and drops, yet Kansas can get rolled up and smoked by 35, and they don't move. Do you think because the SEC has dominated college football so much and people think that there's a SEC bias in college football, that there is an anti-SEC movement in college basketball? Because I'm just the more I look at it, the more it's starting to it's starting to look that way to me, Ron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think when you look at the talent from top to bottom and the records and the strength of schedule, it it doesn't look right. It doesn't uh, it doesn't shake out the correct way. And I think it's easy to um overlook it i think that's why it's so important for the sec to be out there on that main stage and get that national play of the year recognition i think it's also um an opportunity right here with all of these teams that are so good these top six seven teams that need to get to the final four to put you into um that that the stratosphere as far as knowing that this is a basketball conference as well when you look at the coaching um i don't think it's a better lineup in coaching, you know, from top to bottom, when you talk about big names, guys that can draw it up, guys that can go get wins. Um, yes, Mizzou slacked up this year. Dennis Gates, wait till he gets his guys in next year, is what I would say. Yeah. You know, it's going to be similar to like what Drinkwitz did in football. But you look at how serious it is, and you have to make somebody get to the Final Four. You have to go get that chip. We haven't been since, what, 18? Yeah. Bruce Pearl making it to the Final Four. So to be in that conversation, to be taken seriously, you have to go and put the product out there on the main stage. Mm-hmm. And we haven't done that yet. So um, I don't think that's right because Kansas would lose and remain in the top 15 for it's amazing the entire season. It's, it is crazy. But I, I think, man, the good thing about it, the, the coaches that motivate in the SEC will be the ones to put that chip on these guys' shoulders and play with a different um, mm. a different, a different tenacity, if you will, walking into this tournament and something to prove, man. No, I love that. I think answer. he's right about winning the championship, right? Because we see that in, in college football so often when we talk about Alabama got the benefit of the doubt in a play in a yeah. playoff or something, or Georgia got the benefit of the doubt. When you look at the SEC, Kentucky, I think in the last 15 years, Kentucky's the only team to win the national championship. Yeah. So maybe there's part of that trust factor in the, around the country. Yeah, it's it's well, Ron, uh, Kansas got brought up a lot already, but I don't want to talk on the, t- uh, the team I was on the other side of that game, and that's Houston. LJ Cryer and Shed. I think Shed dropped 37 points, and that wasn't only a win. I mean, they beat their ass in every facet of basketball. Yes. Is Houston the best team in college basketball right now? Man, I would sure push for it. Um, them, I also think UConn, I love what Tristan brings to it, and I yeah. also believe, man, Tennessee is right there. I'm with um, you. When you look at those guys – I'm still not a believer in Purdue, but when you start to talk about Houston, what Kevin Sampson demands of his guys, and it's it's almost unspoken, like and it doesn't get as much shine, um, if you will, 
Because when you think about Tennessee and you think about defense being their calling card and guys getting snatched out the game because they didn't play defense, they always point back to Coach Barnes and, hey, man, Coach Barnes, some kind of got to evolve. He'll he'll make his team suffer in order to make a guy make a point across for a guy playing defense. Yeah. You don't hear that about Kevin Sampson. It's almost understood that this is what everybody does. So I think, man, they are one of the most dangerous teams. Shed, um, and to me, the way Shed scores the ball, man, is just different. You know what he's going to bring as far as the leadership. Um, cry, like they, they got a got a hell of a team, dog. And imagine <laughs> they they lost some guys too. Um, but it's it's pretty serious, man. The, could you imagine what Tremont Mark would be like with this bunch too? I'm like, sure he wishes he was back after the way Arkansas played this year. Think so? right, it's, it, that's a great point Blaine brings up, and, and there's some nuance to it. A lot of teams play physical. I think Houston, yeah. Houston to me looks like a football team that plays basketball. I think they yes. could win a game 30 to 27 if they had to. But I think what makes Houston so good defensively is it's one thing to play physical. It's another thing to play that physical without fouling. Right, yeah. like, like there's some people just play out of control and just beat the hell out of everybody, and all of a sudden we're in the double bonus with 12 and a half minutes to go in the half. Houston, to me, has kind of found that balance, Ron. And to, I mean, you talk about winning games in multiple ways. I mean, they could drop 90 on you. We've seen them do it before. But if they got if they got to take you out out behind the bar, and we just got to yeah. throw hands for for two and a half hours, we can do that too. So I just I love their versatility, man. That that's one of the most impressive things. I think when you look at it and you see two or three guys playing that way automatically as an official or a fan, you're watching it like, hey, man, this, look at this dude. This dude just fouling. He's hacking out there. But when you got all five playing like that at the same time, it makes a difference. Referees do not want to stay at the game for four hours. Yeah, so they cannot true. call every foul. If everybody plays with that same intensity, hey, they're going to look at the other They gonna look at the other team when the coach is complaining and put their palms up and say, hey, man, <laughs> what you want to do? Why don't yeah. y'all toughen up? Y'all got to play match the intensity. So that's a good point. That's that's the thing, man. These guys that play defense, teams that play defense. I learned this a long time ago watching Rick Patino and playing against his teams. If all five guys play with the same intensity, there's no way they can call every single foul because you'll look a great up point. and it'll be twelve to zero on fouls, and then you're gonna get calls from the administration and. Up yeah, the, uh, the officials and stuff. You can't the do mayor, it. the mayor, the governor, everybody. All right, one from the chat, everybody. and then I want to ask about Tennessee. All right, let's go to Mister Parker. He says, "Ron, how does Rick Barnes get Santiago Ves- uh, Vescovi to find the killer in him shooting from three? Balls need him to at least contribute twelve points per game for them to keep moving in the tournament." Yeah, I, I, I think this is um, this is something that, that keeps coming coming. Up when you talk about a guy that has been first team, um, second team, um, really had an impact his entire career. I don't necessarily think is Coach Barnes having to get something um, triggered in uh, Santi to to get going. I honestly believe that if he were to do what he's doing, you got to ask yourself: Could Jonas they do take that same step? Yeah. Could Zakai Ziegler be able to be in the same role? Would Dalton Connect be able to flourish and have this National Player of the Year type uh, type season if Santi was averaging those twelve? You are, those are the outliers: Josiah Jordan James and Santi Vescovi. You look at them coming in, and what else are they bringing to the game? You know, yes, would I like them to be able to get out there and score twelve a game? Yes, but I also think, what does it take from everyone else? Now, you're not going to have everybody averaging 12 points a game. Not when you have guys like a dude whose second team take a leap the way he did. Mm-hmm. Zakai take a leap the way he did. Dalton Connect take a leap the way he did. Jordan Ganey be able to come in and have an uh, impact off of bench. Mayshack. Also, like all of these guys that you have coming in and taking different shots, I think, I agree. I would say more six to eight points. Um, 12, that's a lot of points in a team that's free-flowing and you got a guy – that can go out there and drop 30 and then pack for 30, not just a high shot attempt 30. So um, I, I think I think it's something that not Coach Barnes has to do. I think it's something Santi has to do. His guys trust him. He has to be um, hell-bent on making that shot get up, not necessarily yeah. even um, them searching for him to get going. He has to say, I'm going to shoot this ball. Imagine how many times he pump fake, get to the lane, and pass it back out. 
Yeah. Shoot that ball sometimes. Sometimes that's your best offense getting it off the rim. Mm-hmm. Uh, with, without a doubt. Last question we're here with Ron Slay from the SEC Network, the Boom Boom Room. Always love talking with him. Uh, Ron, look, I, I, I call him Diet Luca. Dalton Connect. He's, he's one of the, I mean, he's about as nasty as it gets. I mean, he can drive the ball too. It's not like he's a one trick pony, even though that would still yeah. be a hell of a trick from the outside. <laughs> When you look at Vescovy, to me, it's not how many shots you make, it's it's when you make the shots. I think yeah. he's become more of a, a spot guy that, than he has been a, a volume guy. And when you have Dalton, and I think that's why their team, in my opinion, that leads me to this question. Is this the most confident that you have been in a Tennessee team in a long time going into an NCAA tournament? Because it seems like that one bugaboo that they had, that guy that can't go get him a bucket consistently when they hit that rut in the NCAA tournament game, they got him now, and God, did they play defense too, man? Yes, indeed. You got to have somebody to tilt the scales. Um, it's all it's all good when you're running schemes, and you need an out of bounds play drawn up, or you need to come down and you need to get a stop. But what about that time when the game, game is handling, hanging in the balance, and you just need you need somebody to go make a play? <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. it, we can't draw nothing up. We can't say, "Hey, man, go screen this, get this switch." No, give this man the ball, move out of the way and go and get the board, get back on defense. It's that simple. <laughs> We're going to live and die with it. I think, man, when you got a guy like Dalton Connect, that's something you've been missing, and it's different, different when you have a wing that's doing this. Yeah. More mm, guards win point. tournaments without question. Guard play wins tournaments. And this is coming from a big, so I'm biased. But bigs can go and win a game. That's why when I think you start talking national player of the year, um, in, in, that, in that realm – Dalton Connect should be right up there because of the impact and what you just said when he does it more so than anything else. The game hanging in balance and this man go off when you're down 10 and put you up 12. It's amazing to watch it happen. I think that's the big separator for me with Zach Eady as far as impact goes. Yes, coming out of the gate, he has it. But anytime you go down 10 points, I don't think anybody expects or due to be dug out of a hole by Zach Eady. They more so expect it to be from the guards outside getting open shots. But if you foul them, put them on the line, and you can go down and match two for twos, I think you're fine. You can't do that with Dalton Connect, whether you're switching on them or not. And imagine if he, Dalton Connect, was on a Blue Blood School. This is my this is my spiel right here for National yeah. Media, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if he was on a Blue Blood School. If he was on Kansas, oh. if he was on Syracuse, Duke, Carolina. It would be no question what he would be doing. Yeah. They would put him on a platform and make him national player of the year. So, yeah, Tennessee, this is the most dangerous, especially when you got a guy like Zakai leading the ship. Well, uh, Ron, uh, number one, brother, appreciate you getting up with us. Mm-hmm. I know you guys are super duper busy, especially this time of year. Love watching on the SEC network, man. It is must see stuff. You guys, uh, you know, you and Jimmy Dykes and, and the rest of the crew, man, it's it's awesome. Cannot, cannot wait to watch y'all up here in Nashville. Maybe I have to find a way to get you in the studio somehow. But yes. we'll uh, hey, we'll look at that down the road. But, Ron, I, tell everybody where they can find you to the Boom Boom Room, all that stuff. And, again, man, thanks for joining us. Man, no doubt. The Boom Boom Room, you can go and subscribe to it, man. Some great interviews. It's more personal about um, the people that you really admire in sports and about their journey. Then the Ron Slay on social media on uh, 104.5 The Zone, Monday through Friday, 3 to 6. Yeah. And then the SEC Network. Can't miss me, man. Can't miss me. <laughs> yeah. Like Carmen San Diego, where in the world is this man? <laughs> there he is. But, uh, Ron, thank you so much, brother. Appreciate it, fellas. Thanks, All right. Man. Ron Slate, one of the best. The best man. Man. Hell of a player, too. Yeah. You know, and it's been a while, and, and Ron will tell you that, but golly, he was good. Uh, all right. Let's get to calls. All right. Let's get to Will in New Jersey. Will, talk to us. Jersey boy. How's it going, guys? It's going good. Hello, Will. Will. Hey, well, it depends on how you're doing. Yeah, Will, how are you going? Uh, well, Saquon's dead to me. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I have no issue with him taking the money. Um, I just wish he took the money somewhere else. Somewhere else. Yeah. Um, that was my point. That was my point earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about the burn straight. I, I think, you know, you guys kind of talked about how Carolina just sort of gives everybody away. Um, you know, we're very appreciative that we didn't have to give up a first for that, but, uh, yeah, you know, it, I'll be excited to see what he can do. But, uh, yes, the Saquon, you know, he, like I said, he's dead to me. And, uh, yeah. you know, understandable. I the Eagles. Yeah, understandable. Uh, First, like, I would say this. 
It's going to be Burns and Thibodeau. That's what I was just about to say. It's going to be Burns it's and the Giants. Thibodeau. That's like that's a legitimate. Problem. I know it's been smelling funny offensively after last year with Daniel Jones and and Dayball and it not working out. But you start to look at the Giants at some spots and you're like, man, if they can get a couple just to, and I feel like we always say this about the Giants, but if they can get a couple answers offensively, like legit answers. I mean, that they could do some things. Well, it's uh, you know, uh, Will. I mean, how much do you believe in Daniel Jones, my guy? That's what I want to. Buzz Lightyear. You know, it's it's hard to say because you look at two years ago when the mm-hmm. offensive line was somewhat functional, and you know they made the playoffs. They went to Minnesota. They won. Then they got blown out by the Eagles, of course. But you know that was still such a step up from where they were. Yeah. So I kind of want to see. Like that's why I, I'm kind of hoping they draft like Joe Alt to to you know up mm. that offensive line just to give him some protection just to see what he can do and then you know if it's another down year then we kind of you know this quarterback class is loaded but mm. um, I, I feel like we he hasn't gotten his his full opportunity to to show what he can do and you know I'm I'm just kind of hoping that the offensive line you know with Evan Neal and everybody can can step up and mm. give him that protection and then we can see what the guys got. Well, you guys have the six pick, so that's perfect Joe Alt territory. Uh, did you happen to hear Tiki Barber's comments, or did you just read them? Because I'd like to know. I mean, it sounded like he was trying to make tongue-in-cheek comments, but he was kind of saying the same thing you are, which is the problem I have is Saquon going to the Eagles, not necessarily just him leaving the Giants. Yeah. Um, well, Tiki's an idiot. Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> the, the, he said he, was, he made fun of Eli when he yeah, was Yeah, that was so weird, him. man. He, that was such you know, a weird he, deal. What did he say? He said Eli could yeah, never win a Super Bowl. Win and then they, they, they won the Super Bowl the next year. Yeah, yeah. Is that what it, yeah was? it was the next season. We, you know, <laughs> with like Brandon Jacobs and, and <laughs> <laughs> maybe this is a good sign <laughs> though. Yeah, because I mean, like, the last time was, Tiki ragged on the player, y'all balled out. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. maybe it's a good sign for. But Eagles. you know, when I think about Daniel Jones, it's kind of in the same territory as Justin Fields. I mean, no, no one's been around Daniel. I mean, he's had Saquon, but other than that, he has zero pieces. Um, so I think adding a couple more pieces, we'll see. The real question is, is who do y'all take with that six pick? You say Joe Alt, yeah. but I'm hearing a lot of J.J. McCarthy. If they do that, yeah, I'm telling you right now. J.J. McCarthy. I'm telling you right now. If y'all take J.J. McCarthy with the six pick, and they, this is no knock on Michigan, and I like J.J. Say McCarthy, it. Say but it. if y'all take him with a six pick, I hope y'all lose every game because y'all deserve to lose every game. I heard y'all might sign David yeah. Cohen out of free agency as well. Right, that, that rumor's been swirling. I heard my cell phone stay. Yeah, down. and I heard Sidney Sweeney is huge David Cohen fan. Look, I But David Cohen said, look, but... I'm married to the – even a girl looks yeah. even better than Sydney Sweeney. Yeah, I'm good on that. Know that. Look, there, there's only one Michigan quarterback I want on the New York Giants, and he's sitting in that studio. God, right? I love that. that guy. I love the Booster Will. Club. Tell you what, God, Will. I thought you were going to say Tom Brady. I, no, I, no, I, 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 I thought he was going to say Drew Henson. No, he. Oh, oh well, great call, Will. Will. Appreciate it. Good luck. Man. Don't take JJ McCarthy. I'd write write my senator. <laughs> <laughs> All Agreed. right, let's go to Josh in North Carolina. Josh, how you doing? Back from Vegas. He's alive. Hey guys, what's up? What's hey, up? Did dude? they find you uh, on a mattress on top of a hotel or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I will say I thought I was in the Midwest because I saw every Michigan and every Ohio State fan just everywhere. We're out and there. I, I don't. I mean, it was crazy. And then also what was crazy was we, me and my girlfriend walking down the street past an Ohio State fan, and then they say OH as we walk past them, and um, buddy, you're fake, and you should say it to her face next time instead of being <laughs> oh, a Oh, you but tell anyway. him, Josh. Wow. Uh, Last time we were out there, we saw <laughs> – I heard uh, it was Ryan Day. Well, maybe not yeah, I heard, yeah, I heard it. Yeah, I heard it. It was Ryan Day himself. It wasn't the last time. I heard it was Chris Marler. Ago. We were out there. We saw the billboard that said, uh, <laughs> welcome to Florida. Billy Napier had the like pro Billy Napier sign. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 That's what we were. That's what we saw. Well, uh, anyways, boys, I was at the blackjack table uh, second to last night. I was in Vegas. Whole weekend, I was either up 20 bucks or I was breaking even. So I wasn't complaining. And um, I was sitting at the blackjack table with the, uh, my girlfriend's brother. I had $98. We're playing at a $15 table. I lose the first three hands, so I'm down to about 50 bucks. And um, I stupidly was like, or well, not stupidly, you know, looking back, but I was like, you know what, I, I trusted myself to get out of this rut. 
And then I went about six to seven hands in a row and get a fat stack. And I look over to her brother, and I'm like, what should I do? And he counts the chips, and he's like, as your friend, you should get out. So I get out and cash out, I, and I'm now up to 173. Then the next day, I, ha- I put $100 back on the table. I go down to about 40 bucks on this $10, $11 minimum table where you're spinning a wheel to win money if you get blackjack. Mm-hmm. And um, this woman walks up to the table, and uh, it's like one of those people you see that starts hitting these bets. You just start tailing them. Yeah. She was betting these easy bucks, and, I, and she was hitting every single one. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start tailing her. And then I started winning. I got up to 100. I cashed out. And then 20, 30 minutes later, I go back to the table because it's a different dealer because the first dealer was getting insane hands. Second dealer wasn't getting so much insane hands. They brought hands. in the chopper. Then the first dealer the first dealer that was getting insane hand came back, and I was still beating that dealer. So I went from $49 to 128 boy. That was mainly because I got black. I got black back on one hand, spun the wheel on 150 bucks. And that a boy. I was like, you know what? going to cash out. So I was up. 133 after the weekend. Uh, well, boy, I thought we had the conversation of walking in the casino and putting 100 on black. What was, what was that about? No, you had that. So you, had that. Did, you had that. That was actually I, you talking to yourself. Yeah. yeah. No, I did the roulette wheel a few times and I lost $30 because I did black and I lost. I did, I, vote, or I bet on 23 and I lost and I bet um, on odd and lost. Josh, odd well, and lost. Josh, what so, was well? What was what were the instructions, Josh? No, it's it, you listen. get to the casino, and the first thing you do <laughs> is go put a hundred on black. You, if you go bet anything on other tables, you, you're never going to hit. Well, bud. Josh, now North Carolina sports gambling is it's illegal. legal. So you take exactly. that hundred and thirty three dollars, right? You go to betonline.ag. Yeah. You use promo code booster, right. right? And you throw it on North right. Carolina to win the NCAA tournament. I was thinking about throwing it. uh, uh, I know this is kind of crazy, but uh, I was looking at the odds, and I got some free play money, and I was thinking about playing either the $50 in free play. Uh, I think Auburn's plus $2,000. Don't do it. I think Kentucky's plus $2,000. You might as well walk outside with a $50 bill and light it on fire. Yeah, and then feed it to (laughs) your gorilla. Yeah. You get that $50, and you put Alabama to win it. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And you're a Tennessee fan. You get it. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Good luck. Hey, coming back from Vegas in the green, man. It's dude. It's uh. Last time I was at Vegas, I watched. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm I'm afraid about what you're about to say. It hurts. Are you talking about Dana White? Watching those guys. Yeah. Bet thirty thousand a hand and laugh. I I like lost. I think like five. I was like, dog. If you just give me one of those five or six k, I watched them lose. Two people lose six digits. And one night, and walked out like nothing happened. Yeah. Say, so, hey, like, God, I'm hey. poor. Yeah, he's K- honey, is KFC still up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun times, man. Also, um, next Power Slap coming up in April. Yeah. Yeah, we'll keep everybody posted You're actually on that. in it, Dave. Yeah, you know um, that. You're fighting that big you lion. Yeah. No, I, You're actually finding it, fighting a full-grown grizzly bear. I had to pull out due to injury. My cheek hurts, so I can't do it. Sorry. God, I wanted to make a joke right there, but I can't. No, nope, you can't. Matthew in Arkansas. What's going on, man? What's going on, y'all? It's the heartbroken heart. <laughs> Dude, the here. best he intro is. on call. Yeah. The best intro is on for call. For sure. I swear. For sure. What's up, dude? I appreciate that respect, Blaine. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but the can- my Kansas City Chiefs, we're going all in, y'all, on the 3 P. We got Chris Jones back. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love when rich people call in to brag here. about how much money they have. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> He's like, you got to change your name from Heartbroken Hog to like Heavenly Chief or something. Because <laughs> like on one hand you're heartbroken, on the other end you're just you're the king. Like you're just drinking wine and being fed cheeses and meats. What would you rather see, Matthew? Would you rather see the Chiefs three peat or Arkansas make it to the SEC championship in football? Oh, I guarantee you'll say Arkansas. Arkansas makes it to the SEC. <laughs> it's different. It just means it's more. Dude. Hold on, I didn't finish. <laughs> and they lose to Georgia. And your house to gets nothing. beat the dead. <laughs> it's a win. Yeah. <laughs> it's a win. In my opinion, that's a win. Boys. It's still worth it. Hey, how uh, how are you feeling about uh, Muss and the Boys, this SEC tournament? That was a brutal loss at Bama. But I live bet Bama with like four minutes to go. 
Can't believe that hits. I think it is very likely they can win those first two games. I think it'll be Vanderbilt and then South Carolina in the second round. Mm. But then the third game, I believe, Tell is them. y'all's Auburn Tigers. Dim, 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 and dim, we know dim, how that one's down dim, dim, dim. inside walls. So. Yeah, dude, I, I forgot about that game. That's, that was like a 30 piece on the road. That's what, that's what word, I, I, I haven't re- forgotten the worst yeah. home loss in Bud Walton history. <laughs> God, the only, the only thing that the worst loss in that was Bud Light. <laughs> There'll never be a worse loss than that. <laughs> that's what true. Do you that's... think, uh, you know, what, what, what other moves do you see the Chiefs making in free agency? Um, I, I'm pretty sure they're looking at Darnell Mooney right now from the Bears. There's Ooh, some I like there. that. Look, you can get um, that's Stephen got the Hawking Chiefs out there to run all over. He'll go to the Chiefs them. and have the best year he's ever had. What do you think the Chiefs need to do in free ag- free agency? What pieces they need to add? I will run the corner. Yeah, they're definitely going to get a corner to replace Snead because I think they're going to trade him. They need God, to get a wide why? receiver too. Why would you trade receiver. him? I don't want to question what the Chiefs are doing. They don't have the money to sign him. Well, find it. (laughs) Cap space isn't real. Trade some of the Royals players. (laughs) Nobody cares. Defer his salary to 30 years from now. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Just push it down forever. (laughs) You can pay him in Deutsche. Someone else will deal with (laughs) (laughs) it. Oh, man. Great call, dude. Uh, Matthew's one of my favorites. Hey, we love you. You'll never beat me in NCAA football. Yeah, you'll never beat me either. All right, let's go to Jake in Florida. Jake, what's Twin? going on? Didn't think I was going to hear him until we went to the convention Twin? in November. The Jake convention. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, I wanted to touch on that article that just came out with uh, about Nick Saban. Mm-hmm. Oh, touch uh, all over hiring. it. Yeah, so what better way? I just want to say what better way for Nick Saban to save college football, to realize he can't do it as a head coach anymore. He's got to get out. And what better way to cement his legacy than to uh, change college football from the top? You know, I, I want a 30 for 30 on that if that happens. You know, yeah. the man who saved college football. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll say this. Regardless of, of fandom, who you root for, whether you love Nick Saban or whether you hate him, mm. I really do believe he cares about the – he wants the best for college football. Mm-hmm. I, I really do believe that. And I would have no problem having Nick Saban be in charge of college football as a czar. I would love some, you know, commission with him and Greg Sankey and, I don't know, me, you know, and, and like one other person um, or two other people, y'all two, sorry. Sorry, guys. Can I say this, Jake, though? Can, can, I, can I? I keep hearing everybody talking about, um, look, Kalen DeBoer, we've talked about, is is really good coach, unbelievable coach. But everybody's like, it was, Alabama's got a couple recruits lately, and everybody's like, see, no drop-off. No drop-off from Nick Saban. I hope everyone realizes that the shine on Alabama has not worn off. Alabama is still Alabama. Kalen DeBoer can recruit, but kids still want to go to Alabama, right? It's it's an obvious business decision. The question's going to become, what happens when Alabama isn't winning like Alabama usually has for one year or something, and that shine goes off, and then you got to build it back up? That's the thing I'm waiting for to see. We're not going to know well, until we get to that point. You understand what I'm saying? Well, like, like, it's still hot. Yeah, it's well, still in, super hot. In, to, in today's game, and until the NIL – guidelines get set in today's game i don't think alabama's going going anywhere not with the current nil guidelines because yeah i agree with that everybody knows we've had we've had the the saving discount but people just assumed alabama was going to fall off and pay you know pay touched on it yesterday with that little segment he did just because Alabama wasn't spending the extra money doesn't mean they don't have the capability to spend the extra money for sure jake you know, but whenever you have a Whenever you have an athletic organization that is like dead set on football is king, we're going to invest all of our yeah. resources into football. You're not going anywhere, regardless who the head coach is. I I, I agree, but my my point is my my point is this: P- we are not going to know about Kalen DeBoer and Alabama until because because when Nick Saban would they would lose the game they weren't supposed to, or they would struggle for for a little bit, which was very rare. It was always hey. 
look, it's Nick Saban. He's going to fix it. They're going to be fine. He's the GOAT. What happens, right? And Alabama's not going to turn into a 6-6 six and six team. Nobody's saying that's going to happen. But everybody that's already jumping up and saying, Kevin DeBoer's just as good as a recruiter as Nick Saban, and nothing is going to change. That's just wrong. That's so disrespectful to Nick Saban, in my opinion. That is devaluing Nick Saban as a head coach. That's not to say that Alabama is going to be awful or anything like that. But what happens when Alabama goes eight and four and that shine is off and there's other teams that are able to throw money in NIL like we're already seeing? That's when you're going to find out with Kalen DeBoer, can he really keep Bama at the level that Nick Saban had them? That's all I'm saying. We're not going to know until that point. But right now, Alabama is still Alabama. There still has not been another head coach that has coached a game in Tuscaloosa or for Alabama in the last, what, 17, 18 years? So I'm not saying Kalen DeBoer's awful, but I'm also saying don't crown this man like he's Nick Saban. That's my whole point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I agree wholeheartedly. We'll never, we'll never get up. I mean, he's the GOAT for a reason. We'll never get there with Kalen DeBoer. Not to that level. And but, it's unfair um, to really ask him quick, that. Yeah, really, really quick before I get off here, um, Alabama basketball, I just want to give you guys some stats. Uh, I did this myself, my own research. That a boy. Teams, teams that average over 80 points a game. Uh, Alabama has played 10 games with, uh, against teams that have averaged over 80 points, top 50 in total offense. They are 2-10. and 10. We are 2-10 yeah. and 10 against those games. We actually have won both of the, both of the wins. We're at home. And we split. That was, that was Auburn and Florida. And we ended up splitting with those two teams uh, afterwards. If Alabama plays a team that averages over 80 points in the tournament, I don't care if it's in the round of 64, round of 32, I expect an early exit. Do not yeah, touch yeah. Alabama if they play an offensive uh, team averaging over 80 points. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's a crazy take at all, Jake. I, I, at all. But, man, we appreciate it. Dude. Appreciate Great it, call. Jake. Fantastic. Thank you, call. man. All right, that's it for callers. A couple things to get who here, uh, get to here. It looks like sources are saying um, that uh, former Packers running back Aaron Jones is expected to sign with the Vikings, which would keep him in the NFC North. Uh, that means uh, two mm. revenge games next year. Somebody's wow. I wonder what the, uh, what, I wonder what that deal is going to be. I don't know. So we'll keep we'll keep an eye on that. Got rid of uh, a couple other things here. So did you guys see that uh, Deadspin uh, entire staff got laid off? I uh, got fired after. Look, I, I never startup. cheer for people getting fired unless it's Tony Barbie or the people that work at Deadspin. So I don't think it could happen to a better group of people. I you just you can't kill what's already dead. I thought we've done this like a couple times yeah. at this point. I have no idea what Deadspin is. Remember exactly. They, remember and they, that's why they're they ran the article that I was talking about with the Kansas City Chiefs kid. Oh, the, the face the, the face yeah. paint. Called him racist. They ran all Oh, those are real stuff. people. They said Adam Schefter. Hey, did you see the one guy who wrote the article that is now fired? put Pulitzer nominee in his bio and all you have to do if you write a book is pay $75 to be like a nominee for a Pulitzer but he put but that look I get it I'm, I was a Heisman Trophy candidate so I mean I was too true. that is true I, I, uh, I help I, I hang out with Batman sometimes um, a couple Jake more here out with me sometimes a couple more here can we bring up the uh, Caitlin Clark photo do we have uh, this? I is, mean, Caitlin Clark had a historic record breaking season, Big Ten champ. I love it. I love if if she's paying homage to Kobe here, I love that too. But the the article that published this said same energy. This is starting to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> like this it, it, like it really didn't bother me, but it's a slow rumble <laughs> that's really starting to piss me off. That's a conference championship. It's not even a natty. That's Kobe Bryant with, with the league title in the NBA. Well, it's just what are we doing? It just reminds me of forgetting Sarah Marshall when Paul Rudd's trying to teach him how to surf, and he's like, he's like, all right, you're doing good. He's like, now, now you're doing way too much. Mm-hmm. Now you're doing way too much. I'm not asking you to stop or not do anything because you're basically boogie boarding, but you're doing way. Way, Kaylin Clark, incredible. But it's not her fault, right? It's I mean, not her. Not, I don't. I, no, just, I, partially, yeah. What, I mean, you, you did take so you the blame picture. her for taking the picture. Yes, I don't. She didn't take the picture. She's with the trophy. She, now, she's well, posing someone in else the picture, took the picture, Dave. Yeah, I, let's let's just sometimes. I don't blame her. Sometimes we go too far. I blame taking the picture and then putting it side yeah. by side with Kobe, which she didn't do, and then saying exact same energy. She yeah. creates your own moments. How about that? 
We're trying to be. Yeah, how about you win, win, go to the final, like win in the NCAA, win the NCAA tournament. All right, last one, last reaction here today. Um, I wanted to pull this clip. This is from the women's Utah State uh, head basketball coach. She was in a press conference uh, after they lost. Uh, Can you play this? And how do you plan to rebuild for next season? I'm not going to be rebuilding. I just coached my last game at Utah State. I spoke with Diana, and they're going in a different direction, and I respect her decision, and I hope they get a really good coach in. I'm assuming that's going to be the last question. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. No more questions. Thank you. Thank no you more questions. A um, couple things. That's rough. How does the AD, like, if you're the athletic director, like, there doesn't need, you don't need to go to the press conference, right? They didn't, like, Lane Kiffin didn't show up at the press conference. They fired him. You know, like, right after the game, like, on the field. Uh, it's tough. Coaching business is really tough. It's dog-eat-dog. Um, that's just an awkward moment. She handled it well, though. She handled it really, really well. Handled it better than I would. I mean, we're all Ooh, assuming God, they, that God you, knew not for yeah, not if you, but don't you ever, done? Don't oh. ever let Blaine have a have press conference. Hey, how are you going to rebuild the team next It'd year? It'd be a 45-minute of a roast session. No, no. Here's what it'd be. Our athletic director's fat and stupid and sucks <laughs> at his job. Next question. Yeah, and his name's Diana. Um, exactly. I would. I would went up there and be like, "Don't come to Utah State. There's a lot of secrets. Y'all should go digging around." Yeah, Utah State has rats. They're they're cheating. The cafeteria food sucks. They're cheating. <laughs> Girls are ugly. They're cheating. Ugh. All right. Oh man. I'm gonna head over the board. God, my, I don't know what. Oh, good. Why don't you write my bets? Dude? Why don't you send them in? Oh. Cone sends them in in an unbelievable, unbelievably punctual sent- fashion. You send them in like they're like three. Two, I one, in, and then dude. Blaine sends it I in. I send him in, and you don't write like, it Right when here. the show starts. He's like, all right, so here's what I got tonight. One on one last night. Not pissed about it. Not excited about it. Um, here's what I'm on. Boston College, plus two. Almost took a money line. That's a minus 108. Uh, at, against Miami, ACC tournament. Starts today. Excited. A uh, Big 12 tournament starts today. Also excited. And then give me Stony Brook. If you're going to be by the brook, you might as well be Stony. Uh, plus seven and a half. Oh, that's a minus one ten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you got? What do you got? Let's go. Let's Look, brand go. new. Now keep it the same. Okay, you're, ahead, right, you're right. Go, David. Go, David. Oh, because you, you're on a little roll here. No, you sure you don't want to. I don't want to mess. I'm a man of first day of the new habits. bet sheet yesterday, and I went two and zero. Oh. So maybe we keep this energy going. Love yeah. that. We just ride maybe this. Maybe should take a picture like Kobe Bryant. Maybe should burn that. Yeah, so uh, St. Mary's. You should take a picture of Kobe Bryant. I'm sorry. Be quiet. Okay, I'm speaking. <laughs> St. Mary's plus two and a half, minus 110. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and get them with the points. I he like that. Saint. And then uh, North Carolina State, minus Ooh. nine and a half, minus 110. Look, if hey, you can hey. do Immaculate Conception, you can beat Gonzaga. If you can get NC State to cover, we might just give you the month. Yeah. Is that what? Is that <laughs> all it takes? God. Is that all it takes? <laughs> yeah. All let, right. me tell you something, let me tell you something about NC State. They ain't covering, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I bet on the other day, Woo. and they just basically just went. Hey, big I'm shout out. Bad. Big shout out, Montana State and Stony Brook. Yes. Both dogs. Both win yesterday, 2-0. 37-10 and on the month. Let's keep up the gas. So this is what I'll be taking. I will be riding with Jake. Was that that's just one? a weird turn. Don't, don't say. To just keep up the gas? Keep up the gas? I don't know. Something's wrong with you. I know. Give me Stony Brook plus seven and a half. That's going off at minus 110. <laughs> All right. Then uh, give me Oakland minus four and a half. And that is the University of Oakland. That is correct. Okay. So, um, what is that's that going at? That's minus four and a half. That's going off at minus 120. <laughs> minus four and a half. I think I'm having a stroke. Dude, I had the giggles yesterday, man. I think I'm having a stroke. <laughs> all right, just one donation today. I already, oh, read, wow. the, I just read, I already read all the other ones uh, um, because they were on topic, which was good. It's a great job, everybody. It's from our one and true only guy who donates every day just to get at these Braves fan, and that's Ryan Gade with a $2 donation. It's 16 days, Jake. 16 days. Hashtag chop down. Hashtag we coming. Hashtag, you look stupid. Ryan, you better hope to God that the Phillies make the playoffs. Because I will spend every day for the rest of my life telling you about it. I'll do it. Watch All it. Right, let's go to uh, Joe Dis... God, Disjargent? You Dis- got this. Disjargent. Spell it out. There you go. Disjar- yeah, that's it. Des- Jake Des- always trying to be an SEC homer in basketball, trying to call it the best basketball conference. I, blind, to, blind to the analytics of all of it. Mm. Well, it's 
Okay, so it's so far fetched. It's so far fetched. That wasn't even a donation. No. <laughs> That's Sue in the chat. I don't it's it's it. not Joe. It's not so far fetched to think. I guess Seth Greenberg doesn't know anything about basketball. <coughs> yes, Jimmy Dykes doesn't. All right, I think metrically, the analytics say that you're wrong. So there's that too. All right, let's go to CJ real quickly about the poll. Falcons might have gotten fleeced, but they still picked a player that they their team needs. I'm an Eagles fan, but we didn't need Saquon. He helps, but Kirk has a bigger impact. That's a good point. I think that's a really good point. Yeah. CJ, don't want to come into the chat hot. I love it. All right, poll. Who has made the best free agent moves so far? Bears, Falcons, Eagles, other. Hmm. I still like the Steelers signing Russell Wilson. Yeah, I did other. It's um, in there. Other. Okay, I'll go other. I'll go other 43%. I'll go other 42%. Bears, 13%. Okay. Eagles, 28%. Other, 27%. Falcons, 31 Okay. Wow. Wait, oh, wait, what was other? 27 27 So it was, uh, it was so pretty, Falcons. Pretty so they picked the Falcons. Okay. Yeah, pretty even. Yeah. Look, I like it, man. I mean, Kirk, I like we'll the, see. I like the move. I just feel like you paid too much. That's Yeah. But, you too know. Many years we'll too many years. see Kirk Cousins. You're dealing with basically Denzel Washington. Anyways. We appreciate you guys. Shout out to FitBod. Shout out to Good Ranchers. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll check you on the morning. Thanks uh, to Ron Slay as well. Enjoy the college basketball because it starts in about two mm-hmm. and a half hours. And like the chances of the ACC being the best conference in college basketball. How about that? You got to catch the card now. Oh, I'm going to catch it. We're going, going. See oh. it. Why are the lights so low? Oh, it's gone. <laughs>